Well, for those of you who do not know it, Donna is a big fan of cows for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, well anyways, you guys know she likes cows, and uh, we play the cow sounds a lot and all that. Not the cow sills, the cow songs, cow sounds, and uh, anyways, Donna, being as she's from, you know, the United Kingdom, England, she's British, whatever you prefer, she had some special connections over there, which I didn't know about till the other day, and uh, she perks up and she says, I know the perfect cow person we can talk to. So we thought we'd get him on the phone and have a conversation with him. And, uh, <laughs> I can't have a conversation. Ah, uh, didn't I make that funny? So let's get him on the no. phone and uh, see what we can find out. All right, Rand, but before you make that call, we do have a caller on the line and she has a question about cows. I was wondering if you could find out how do cows moo? Well, how, is, how would a person moo in a British accent? <laughs> All right, well... Before we uh, go any further, let me ask you, how do you moo? I moo with an American kind of Nevada accent going moo. All right, a standard cow. Uh, how long have you been uh, wondering about this kind of thing? Um, it's been a couple months. Ah, oh, a girl after my own heart. So, do you run into cows every day, do you? Not so much, just kind of pass them. Okay, so do you, uh, do you pass cows in your daily travels? I mean, have... Have you ever tried to uh, stop and talk to cows? Nah, they're too far away, usually. Well, you know, maybe you should take a minute and stop and talk to them. I mean, it's possible they are British, you know. I mean, cows come from all over the world. They're transported from here to there. You uh, might want to stop and ask them sometime. Maybe. I hope so. That'd be really cool. You'd never know, though. Maybe when you drive by, maybe they're wondering how you talk. All right. Well, uh... Thanks. We're going to uh, see if we can get you an answer. Like I had said earlier, Donna has some connections over there in the uh, United Kingdom. So we're going to uh, give him a call and see what we can find out and see if we can get you One an answer. One of my fellow mooers. <laughs> well, guys, this is a friend of mine, Sir Patrick Stewart. Welcome, Patrick. Well, you've heard our caller's question. And you'd like me to answer that question, which I'm happy to do. It's not a straightforward, simple answer. Unlike probably many other countries where a cow's moo is a cow's moo, in England, you understand, we are dominated by class, by social status, and by location. So, for example, a cow that is in a field next to my house in West Oxfordshire would moo in one kind of way and a cow in a field in the semi-industrial town I grew up in in the north of England would moo in another kind of way. Okay. Uh, am I clear so far? Oh yeah. yeah. Sure. I understand. Well, if I were at home in West Oxfordshire right now and I walk down my lane and there are always cows in the field and I say, hi, good morning cows and they would moo at me like this. Moo. Now, that's a very conservative <laughs> move. You must understand that I live in the constituency of David Cameron, our prime minister, right. who is a Tory. And, and I assume these cows voted for him. I don't actually vote there. I vote in another place in London. Okay. Um, but if I were at my home in Yorkshire, where I grew up, and I went out, and not that there are many fields left where I grew up, but uh, I would find one, and I would find some cows. What you'd hear would be something like this. <laughs> I'll do that again. <laughs> you, you can hear the difference, <laughs> don't you? That is a very big difference. Yeah, well, this is all to do with environmental and cultural conditioning. Now... Then, and I know we don't have time really to go into this in detail. We'd need the whole afternoon. But what your understanding is that the English moo changes from location to location. So you would recommend that the caller talks to cows like all around the country? I would recommend that they do that anywhere, everywhere. Cows have got a great deal to tell us. 
Well, uh, our caller actually is a friend of Donna Natrix. She's from Nevada. Um, do you know anything about that kind of thing? My wife is from Nevada, so I have some experience of uh, Nevada cattle. And if you like, I can give you my impression of a Nevada cow. Wow, did you hear that, Donna? It's like a much higher pitch <laughs> than the other cattle. <laughs> it does sound very nasal, Rand. Is that your mating call? <laughs> yeah, much higher pitch. And it's much more nasal because, of course, that's the way you people talk. And, of course, the cows are influenced by how you talk as you are influenced by the cows. Well, you know, I was just sitting here wondering, uh, Donna laughs at the way I do a Cockney accent. Do you know, uh, is there like, do cows speak Cockney? Uh, do they have a Cockney accent? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, of course, you understand Cockney cows are pretty rare these days. Shakespeare's day, yeah, there were cattle in the middle of London. But nowadays, well, generally speaking, the, the city of London doesn't feel too good about having cattle in Piccadilly Circus, for example. I can give you an idea of a, cock, of a cockney cow. I'm old enough to have remembered when there were cockney cows, and it sounds something like this. Which, which is much more like a sheep than a cow. It is, yeah. But that's, you know, because cockneys, you know, they got these fine sort of accents, they talk like that. So I've heard. They've taken on that sort of sound as well. That's a real rarity. I mean, you, your, your people must not think that they're going to go to London and get on a subway to Whitechapel and they're going to see a cow, because they're not, unless it's in one of these fancy art galleries that's cropped up all over East London. Well, and I'd like to say also, not only does it sound like, uh, like they have a different accent, you know, in different parts of the country, but it also sounds like, like they have a different kind of attitude. You're very sensitive. You're absolutely right. What you heard just now was an urban cow. Okay. And, uh, you know, all of us who live in big cities, we have to be watchful. We have to be on our guard. You know, we have to be prepared for fight or flight at any moment. And it's the same with cattle. Well, one thing, you know, that I know about uh, British culture is breeding. Breeding is very important. Is that, uh, I know it sounds kind of weird, but is that the same with cattle? Well, this is a very interesting question, and I really don't have time to go into it in detail. But um, we had a prime minister many, many years ago called Alec Douglas Hume. And one of the wonderful things about Alec Douglas Hume, including his name, by the way, and you would think that his name was probably spelled H O O M E H U M L or something like that. Mm -hmm. His name was actually spelled H O M E, home, but it was pronounced Hume. And that we do that mostly to confuse America. <laughs> no, like Leicester Square and Leicester and all of that. Oh, yeah. Anyway, the thing about Alec Douglas Hume was that he didn't move his lips when he talked. I'll give an example. This was not the other class that he they don't actually move their lips because moving your lips is terribly bad taste. You understand me? So, if Alec Douglas Hume had cattle, and I'm sure he did, he must have been a landowner because I, I think he was actually Scottish. Um, his cows would have moved something like this. Very refined, <laughs> very sophisticated, very cultivated. These cows would have gone to Eton or Harrow, the cow equivalent of Eton. Sir Patrick Stewart, everyone, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I know Donna does, too. Patrick, now I know why we're such good friends. Thank you so much for coming over. It's yeah. made our day. Yeah, it was great, man. Thank you. You're very welcome. And there you have it, a very special treat. Thank you to Donna, who was lovely enough to uh, call her friend and uh, ask him for some pertinent information on cows. <laughs> You're very welcome.